Hi everybody, welcome back to the Jump Knot Club and tonight we've got a good friend of the Jump Knot Club, Slade Cleaves. How are you doing? How are you, Slade? Um, you've been here quite a few times, Slade, and I'm just sort of memorising all the gigs you've done and you've kind of played every every um, venue in New York. Every small <laughs> venue, yeah. Think yeah. It said. Um, we'll go back to the live theatre way back in about 2003 or something. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you what has happened in Newcastle be from your playing is there uh, a lot of bands uh, play your numbers now. Really? Yeah. In the pubs? Uh, in yeah. the pubs, yeah, wow. drinking days and oh, that's courses exciting. for courses. Uh, <laughs> you could say it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a um, but uh, I, was reading, I didn't realise that you spent a little bit of time in Ireland. I did. Yeah. I, I, I did my junior year of college in Cork. Wow, all school year. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good place. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it was a great busking scene at the time. Was it? And did you and go busking then? I did, and I never even heard of busking, yeah. actually. And I showed up in Cork, and I was just learning how to play guitar. Wow. And I thought, what a perfect way for me to build up my skills and not subject myself to a captive audience. <laughs> I'd be playing for people walking by, which made me more comfortable about starting out like that. So. Yeah, well, I, did, I did the same when I was young. Mm. I, I used to play the double bass and, oh. uh, and go busking. It does, it does make a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a good way to build up your skills. Yeah. yeah. Does, um, does Karen give you a surprise visit to Ireland on, when she does the tours for you? Oh, Karen comes on. She's, she's road manager now. She's yeah. always on the trip. Yeah. <laughs> she can't, we can't work without her. She does all the behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Slade, you've got a new album out. Um, mm. Ghost on the radio, we're going to hear one soon. Um, Ghost on the car radio. Ghost on the car radio. Sorry. Very important to stay yes. <laughs> <laughs> And um, did you do anything different with this one? Was it, uh, was it uh, something? The only thing we did different was uh, uh, we had a, a vocal set up when I was doing the live tracks with the band, and they actually came out pretty good. I mean, I did, the band. Uh, they're session players, so they're not put people that I play with all night, all, right. all year long. So they were learning the song on the spot, and it was just so inspiring to hear these fantastic musicians sort of processing the song and figuring out what to play on the song. That, and I just felt like I, my vocal performances were really good, and that I was I was leading them and, and directing them emotionally on the song. And so the the live vocals are they're not perfect, but um, they were good enough so that we ended up using seven or eight of them. Great. Like I usually do it the other way around. I usually do the vocals last and yeah. after the band has yeah. fleshed out the record. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very brave of you then, Slade, after you, you've done about seven or eight albums, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, it's more, more than that. I'm more older than, than that, Graham. Oh, right. Yeah, maybe 12 <laughs> or 13, I think. I just remember, yeah. we, we did, you did a songwriter circle in there uh, at the Celtic Connections and we went over the pub mm -hmm. and I was surprised that you, used to, you and Rod used to dig the clash. And uh, the Ramones and that, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, it just didn't come out in your music, but you know, it's good to have roots like that. Yeah, well, you know, we were 16, 17, we yeah, got yeah. into the Clash, and, <clears throat> you know, they espoused that do-it-yourself attitude, that yeah. we really, we really latched onto that and started our own band and said, you know, if anyone can do it, you know, if the Clash can do it, anyone can do it, you know, of course. It's more complicated than that, you find out later. But, <laughs> it takes but, years to, yeah. to, to find that out, though, doesn't right. it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, one last thing, because we've had sad news this week of Tom Petty uh, dying. Mm -hmm. were, were you a fan of his, uh, Slade? Oh, huge fan. Yeah, yeah, he was the soundtrack to my adolescent life, you know. And he was, Tom Petty was uh, one, one of the first batches of songs we learned as a garage band. Me and Rod Picot was uh, Bring Springsteen and Tom Petty and, and Jay Giles' band and the Stones. And so, yeah, we did Refugee and Don't Do Me Like That yeah. and uh, The Night Watchman. And, um, listen to her heart and uh, what's that other one? Um, I need to know. Right. That was our big number. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll maybe hear one tonight at the end. I don't know. We might do one. You know? Yeah, we could. Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> okay, Slade. I'm. Can't wait to hear your new songs. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you.